afternoon and welcome to 3 Talk. I'm your host, Nolene. Too many of us take our teeth for granted. We have only one set of adult teeth to last us a lifetime. With proper care, your teeth and gums can stay healthy. But for some of us, an overwhelming fear of the dentist can lead us to neglecting our oral health and resorting to dental intervention only when in extreme pain and distress. My producer Joanne Lurie knows all too well the price one pays for avoiding the dentist chair. After many years of being too afraid to seek the dental treatment she needed, she found herself on the verge of losing her teeth and with no choice but to confront her greatest fear. So after years of avoiding the dentist, um, I ended up in the dentist chair with an emergency retreatment and being told that there is a fair amount of damage to my mouth, which I knew and had been, I suppose, in denial because um, going to the dentist is, for me, it completely freaks me out. Um, I'm very claustrophobic. Um, I'm very, very afraid. And I suppose in part my whole life I've been trying to avoid the dentist chair and only going when it's an emergency and not fixing problems that I know that are there. And now I find myself at the beginning of a very long journey with the dentist and I have to confront the situation now because it's getting to a stage where I'll lose my teeth if I don't. So today I find out what it is that needs to be done. I'm, I'm petrified because in, in doing that, I know I have to confront all those procedures and, and not duck out and not run away halfway through, which is what I've done previously and gone, okay, I'll make an appointment next week and then I just don't ever arrive. So I'm sitting here, my mouth is dry, my heart is beating so fast, my palms are sweaty and it's time. It's time, I've got to do it. So today we find out what's ahead. Madame here needs some work done. So when you first saw Joanne um, Norman, what were your impressions of her team? Well, Nolene, when you referred Joanne to me two weeks ago, she arrived here, quite obviously she was in severe pain. Yeah. But when I saw her, I immediately recognized that not only was she in physical pain, from her dental problems, but she was in a highly agitated state. Mm -hmm. She was in an emotional pain as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this is a very common problem, dental anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big difference, a world of difference between somebody who is fearful of coming to visit the dentist mm -hmm. and somebody who is genuinely phobic. Mm -hmm. We normally classify somebody who is phobic um, if they would do anything in their power to avoid mm, mm, the environment. The yeah. And with all respect to Jo, she has done everything in her power to avoid mm. coming to the dentist over many years. Okay, and why is this, Jo? <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> why have you avoided the dentist? Because I'm I'm very afraid. Okay, I know everyone okay. says they're afraid of the dentist, but I'm I'm claustrophobic. Okay. I'm afraid, I, I'm terribly fearful of not being able to breathe or feeling like I'm choking. Okay. Or anything like that. Um, I've had bad experiences with dentists in the past. You, know, you go to a dentist and they say, if you want me to stop, put your hand up. Mm. You put your hand up and they say, stopping a baby. You know, mm. I'm almost done. Mm. Um, I've never had a dentist sit with me and say, well, this is what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with this? We'll do it slowly. Yeah, yeah. But it's also my own fault because I've left things to emergency situations. Because you're fearful. I'm very fearful. And that reinforces the cycle. Because a, a patient that is fearful stays away. So that when they do present, there's a, there is an emergency. Mm. And that is the... the yeah, that. you see, I think Joe and I are in the same boat, as are many people. I really, I only come to you <laughs> when there's an emergency. It's sore or something is broken. Otherwise, I really don't come because I mm. am terrified. Mm. As good as you are, which you are, <laughs> and you really make me feel at ease, but I'm still, I'm still terrified. Yeah. Okay, so you, you put Joe at ease. What is wrong? Because she's left it so long. What is wrong with her teeth? All right, there's a multitude of problems. Ooh. A multitude. A multitude. A multitude. Not just one or two, a De multitude. Definitely not one or two. Yeah. Now, there's a difference between her wants and her needs. Her wants was that she needed to be out of, she wanted to be out of pain. Mm -hmm. So that was my immediate problem. So once I'd calmed and relaxed her, 
I ascertained that she was suffering from severe pain in the top right hand side of her mouth. Mm -hmm. We took an x-ray, we examined the tooth and it was quite obvious that that tooth needed root canal treatment. So we, I started the therapy immediately. Mm -hmm. She managed it superbly. There was no problem. Well done. And I've, I've used a process of what we call desensitization, right. where we gradually break the patient into being exposed to all the, the atmosphere of this environment. So Norman, what does she need done? Okay, she needs a lot done. So let me go through it tooth by tooth. Basically, we start from the top right hand side. Her wisdom tooth is missing, which is the very last tooth on the top right hand side. The subsequent two back molar teeth, both are very, very damaged and destroyed. By what? By dental decay, by disease. So we need to do the root canal treatment on both of them. Whoa. We then need to build up a good solid foundation. And over those teeth, she will then need full porcelain crowns. Whoa. Okay. So, that's just two teeth? That's just the, the two molar teeth right at the back. Okay, we is then, there more? Uh, definitely. Wait. Then we more. come to the top left hand side. Uh, Mimi, give me the model. You'll see on the model and on the x-ray that her top left premolar is completely destroyed. So that tooth is totally unsalvageable. We have to remove the top left premolar. Okay. That's one of the, the more pressing issues okay. because a tooth that is unsalvageable should be removed as quick as possible okay. because it, it, it serves as a, uh, as a focus of infection for uh, the rest of the mouth. Okay. So that's why I want that out immediately. If Joanne had been having a cleaning every six months, religiously, she would never have been in this position. Because the, the, the cleaning is what keeps the bacteria at bay. The cleaning is what keeps the decay at bay. The cleaning is what keeps the, the teeth clean, fresh, healthy, and the gums healthy. Uh -huh. But you realize if you go for a cleaning every six months, then the dentist gets to tell you that there's something wrong with your teeth possibly, and yes. then you have to confront it. And I've spent 34 years trying not to confront dentists. Yeah. And this is gonna take how long? The whole process, if she's a good attendee from now on, we can get it done within two months, okay. six weeks to eight weeks, depending on you know, her, her time frame. Yeah. Obviously, when we undergo a process of oral rehabilitation, we have to take into consideration the patient's financial constraints, okay. her time commitments, her social um, program, and um, we sit together and have a case discussion, and we do nothing without her permission. You know, and I know, well I hope you know, that modern dentistry is poles apart from the old style dentistry, mm. you know? Isn't that so, Jane? Absolutely, I mean it's the first time ever, and I've been to many, many dentists over the years, and then run away. It's the <laughs> first time ever that it's been explained to me, I feel like I'm more in control of the process, yeah. I feel like I have options. That's very It's important. not like, um, this has to be done this way. It's, uh, you know, Norman's taken into account a lot of my fears and a lot of um, my worries about the mm -hmm. procedures mm -hmm. and and it's kind of molded it towards, to, to me, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, about what I can handle, what I can deal with, um, you know, trying to get it done as quickly as possible, but at the same time not overwhelm me with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel more in control of the process. I just feel more. I feel less like um, if I if I if it becomes too much for me, that it's just too bad. I'll yeah. just have to just you know deal with it. It's 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 kind of like a partnership. Yeah, it is absolutely. Please welcome dentist from Kai Dental Practice, Dr. Norman Kai. Thanks so much for coming in once Thank again. You. Were you very surprised at the state of Joanne Lurie's teeth? No, no, Lee, not at all. I wasn't surprised at all. I mean... Were you shocked? I wasn't shocked, no. It's nothing I haven't seen before. Yeah. And it's no worse than other patients that have seen me. I've been in the game for a very long time. Yeah. So I was just upset to hear and see her distress. I mean, it is quite um, unnerving for, for the practitioner to be faced with a patient that is literally quaking, shivering, yeah. sweating, and it's very stressful to help them overcome that. Yeah. And 
So what are we seeing now, uh, because you, you don't really want to say how distressed you were about uh, Joanne's teeth, but that was the state of Joanne's teeth be, before. Let's just talk about what was, what was wrong. I know we spoke about it during the insert, but just looking at that picture. We're looking on the screen, the, on the left top hand corner, the, that tooth was hopelessly destroyed with decay. Yeah. Um, she came to me as an emergency. This photo was taken after I had spoken to her at length and after I had counseled her and after I'd explained to her what needed to be done. And um, a root canal treatment had to be started. It simply couldn't wait any longer. Yeah. So that was what was needed on the top tooth. Subsequently, it's been completed. The, the next tooth down from that has also been destroyed from years and years of neglect. Mm. That too needs extensive restorations, root treatments, cores and a crown. Yeah. Um, she obviously wanted some teeth whitening to improve the aesthetics. Yeah. Uh, if we see a frontal view, we'll see that her two front teeth were very badly discolored mm. um, with this grayness. They've yeah. been filled many, many years ago and have been discolored over the years. Yeah. They've also become shorter over the years. Um, and there are a lot of other problems. The gums were a bit inflamed, a bit uh, swollen. She mm -hmm. needed some gum therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a whole host of problems that we had to sort out. But mm -hmm. the primary concern was to help her cope and help her and encourage her to come back to and see me. What, w what would you say were the biggest challenges in, in trying to fix Joanne's mouth? I think it was gaining her trust and getting a commitment from her uh, it's not an easy decision to change your mindset into a, to saying, right, this is it. I want dental health. Mm. I'd like general good health. And it starts with your mouth. So that was a huge challenge to gain her trust, to be empathetic, to understand her needs and to help her through this journey. And because I'm so glad that you, you spoke about general health because uh, having good teeth and healthy gums is not just about aesthetics. It's Absolutely a, it's, it not. has to do with so many other things Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. You cannot be considered, you, you can't consider yourself healthy if you don't enjoy good oral health. Oral health is the, the, the start of a lot of systemic problems, mm. a lot of health problems. Mm. And gum disease is linked to a lot of systemic problems. Mm. Uh, diabetes, um, heart inflammation, strokes, premature um, delivery of babies. Mm. Uh, it's, there's so, there's so there much. There are so many uh, disorders and conditions linked to good or bad oral health. And really, it's not as terrifying as you think it is. What is it about the dentist that you fear the most? Call us on 86 or tweet me, no lean 3 talk After months of dental treatment, we'll see Joanne's brand new smile and find out if she's overcome her fear of the dentist. That's when we return. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Yes. No, I'll just say goodbye. How many minutes for the segment? Four and a half. Okay. Oh, four and a half. Including the insert. Including the insert, or is it just talk time? Oh, okay. Is that enough to cover the, the fear? Because the pictures with the, with the massage stuff, I need a bit more. Okay, Joanne says we need more for the section. Less on three and five. And five. Six and a half, yeah. Okay, cool.
Welcome back to Three Talk. This afternoon, we're talking about caring for your teeth. Crippled by a fear of the dentist, my producer Joanne Lurie found herself with a massive amount of damage and decay hiding behind her smile. After years of avoiding dentistry, she landed up in Dr. Norman Kai's chair for an emergency root treatment, and months later, she has a brand new smile. But did she still have a dental problem? Please welcome Joanne Lurie. Don't you? I just love your smile I'm I mean, I haven't even said smiling. hello yet and she's already ah. <laughs> that's what happens when you've got brand new teeth which are looking fabulous thank you absolutely I can't stop smiling no I'm sure I'm sure because the, what you had before and what you have now totally totally different yeah. really looking good when did you though first start having the fear of the dentist from my first dentist visit um, I think probably around the time I was five or six, I went to a dentist. Yeah. I, I assume that's when you meant to start going to a dentist. And it was it started then. Like you I would I was afraid from when I was little and I was told by the dentist, Don't be a baby. It's gonna mm. be fine, don't be a baby. And you know, they always say to you, Lift your hand if you want me to stop. Yeah. And you lift your hand and then they're like, they like, Don't be you. a baby, just relax. I'm almost done. And I'm yeah. that for me. Call me a control freak, whatever. If you're claustrophobic and you don't have control over the situation, you feel panicky. You yeah. feel like I, some people are afraid that they're going to go to the dentist and it's going to be sore. I'm afraid I'm going to die. Now, you had to go to Norman mm. because you had an emergency situation. Like I think many of mm. us, we only go to the dentist when there's an emergency and you cannot put it off any longer. So tell me about that. Well, worse than that is that I could feel a little hole starting in my tooth months before mm. in that tooth and I could feel a bigger hole and a bigger hole yeah. and a bigger hole until obviously I had an exposed nerve or something and I was walking around the office in terrible pain and you said to me, enough, you've got to go to the dentist. I, I felt it happening. Yeah. I knew it was happening. And I remember calling you and saying that we've got an emergency on yeah. our hands. Yeah. This woman is walking around in pain but she's refusing to go I to the dentist. Go. And I felt it when it could have just been a filling. And instead of it just being a filling, I left it and left it and left it, and it became a root treatment yeah. and a crown. It became a much bigger you know, issue. There's nothing more distressing than a dental pain. A pain in your yeah. jaw or head, it's something unbelievably distressing for the for the sufferer yeah and, and it can be avoided can't it absolutely it can and la be later on we'll actually talk about uh, just general dental hygiene and how important it is to go and see your dentist every six months to avoid having exactly. a root canal treatment exactly. but what what joanne was describing that fear of the dentist uh, is that what a lot of your patients uh you know come in with an emergency because of the fear yes a lot of people the majority of people have had an unfortunate dental experience as a child and unfortunately traditionally the practice of dentistry is associated with pain and suffering but really that is so long ago modern dentistry today by a caring competent practitioner is almost pain-free or it should be pain-free mm. if parents can only understand that the importance is to break the child in atraumatically as possible mm. bring your kids to the dentist early on when it's just a look-see, a play session, and familiarize them with the environment. Yeah. But we have a lot of patients that walk in with this extreme fear. There's a fear of embarrassment to mm. open their mouth. Mm. There's a fear because they've neglected themselves. Yeah. There may be a fear because they have halitosis. There may be a fear of needles. There may be a fear of pain. There may be a fear of what I'm going to tell them, mm. what the diagnosis may be. Yeah. There may be a fear, as Joanne had, a fear of choking, mm. of claustrophobia, yeah. of having a fullness in her mouth. So there's a whole host of fears which need to be addressed slowly and carefully mm. by discussion. Before I even picked up a, a, a drill or a mirror or anything, Joe and I, and I had two or three conversations in my office, away from the dental surgery, in a non-threatening environment, and I listened to her story, and I heard her heartache, and I could see the pain in her eyes, and it's been an honor and a privilege helping her, mm. and um, I, I compliment her on fulfilling this journey, mm. and today I'm so proud that she's got this wonderful bright smile. And she does look fantastic, absolutely gorgeous. How did, for you, did you overcome that fear? Are there certain techniques that you implemented? Well, I think that it was partially the environment. 
from the moment I walked into those rooms, uh, Marcel and Deirdre on the reception, everybody, and I know Norman had briefed everyone within an inch of their lives that I was a problem child. And, and Mimi. Mimi, God bless Mimi. I mean, I credit Mimi with, so, I mean, she literally held my hand during some of the, the procedures. And Mimi's your assistant. Yeah, she and you have to absolutely hair. amazing. And Norman, who, it, I mean, I was saying to him earlier, it's stuck in my head. Relax your shoulders, concentrate on your breathing, mm. relax your face, just constantly uh, yeah, talking sure, me yeah. through it. And then for me, I had to find pres uh, uh, sort of methods to help me get through it. And because I'm claustrophobic and because I'm scared I'm not going to be able to breathe, for me what I did was I lay in the chair and almost had to go into sort of a meditative state. And I would count, I would take deep breaths because mm -hmm. that was my biggest fear. I wouldn't be able to get to the bottom of my lungs. Yeah. And I would count each breath so that I was focused completely on my breathing, proving to myself I can breathe, I can breathe. And eventually okay. I would lose count and just towards the end I used to joke saying if my mouth didn't have to be open I'd be napping because I was so relaxed. That's it unbelievable. Like a second For home. someone that was so, so afraid of mm. the dentist, it's unbelievable. Mm. How, what other methods do you use to kind of calm, calm your, your patients who are very anxious? Well, I did mention that there's a process which psychologists call desensitization, uh -huh. where you gradually and slowly introduce or sensitize the patient to the environment. Yeah. Um, Empathy, nothing can replace empathy, understanding, mm. listening to the patient, actually hearing, not only listening, but hearing what is being said to you and what is not being said to mm. you. And absolutely giving control over to the patient. That mm. is critical. If the patient feels that they're in control and they can stop you and you will listen to them, mm. then that's 90% of the battle. Yeah. She eventually trusted me. I could do whatever I wanted to mm. in her mouth eventually, and she would let me. At the beginning... I could do nothing without explaining to her exactly step by step what I was about to do. And Madam is a control freak because she wants to know everything <laughs> that you do. Never been everything. to dental school, but she wants to know everything. <laughs> Jojo, you look absolutely fantastic. It was worth the seven it months. So was. Really, really do look fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank Joanne you. certainly okay. isn't the only one who has avoided dentists due to fear. Last week, we chatted to Russell Krawitz, who hid from the dentist chair for 17 years. I avoided the dentist for about 17 years. The reason that I felt I didn't want to go back was I had a really bad experience. A dentist that I'd been to was very rough. My teeth have always been very sensitive. So I thought for the amount of um, frustration that I endured, I may as well just look after my teeth myself. I tried as much as what I could to look after my teeth, flossing, brushing regularly, flossing daily, um, mostly after big meals, once again flossing, brushing. But my teeth have always been sensitive and they've become worse over the years. So I knew at some point I needed to go back to a dentist. The fear was a number of reasons. Definitely the pain that I thought I was going to have to endure based on the fact that my teeth are extremely sensitive. I was also concerned about going to simply any dentist, not knowing who the person was, how they were going to uh, consult with me, how they were going to give me treatment. Um, and I was a bit, a bit afraid that I'd left it for so long that my teeth were going to be in a really bad state. So out of fear of that, the biggest fear, I simply just didn't go. When I thought about going to the dentist, I just had a really big feeling in my stomach. I was very anxious, um, I got incredibly nervous and I just felt it was not worth it and I just carried on not going to a dentist. A really good friend of mine had had his teeth redone. Um, he had had fillers done and he had had whitener done. And when I looked at the results of what he had been through, I was absolutely amazed. My question to him was, you know, weren't you scared? And he was like, I've got the most amazing dentist. I really think you should go and see him. He's very calm, he's very gentle. Just give it a try. And I decided to take the advice and I came to see Dr. Kai and I was absolutely blown away. From the minute I walked into the, the, the rooms, um, everybody was friendly. He was genuinely kind, he put my mind at ease, he explained exactly what he was going to be doing, and I started with the treatment. The first thing we did was the brightener, the, the smile bright, and he just spoke me through it, he kept checking up on me throughout the process, it was about an hour and a half, and when we were done, he was just so complimentary, and I just felt so at ease, and it was just an incredible experience. I was quite ashamed, that it had take me, taken me so long to come to a dentist. And now that I've been, 
I've, I've subsequently been three times since, and that's all been in the space of a year, and I actually can't wait to come back. Are you not sure how to care for your teeth properly? Call us with your questions on 86 3303 or you can tweet Nolene3talk. After the break, we'll meet Tulani, whose life has literally been changed by his new smile. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just talk. My name is Tulani Masango. Okay, thanks. 